So I want to go into the uh, topic of how this actually gets into a building and it's fine going in and coming out, which is sure. because it's thermally insulated. Right. Depending on the materials in that building, the fires could get really, really hot. Oh, yeah. Right. If it's steel, for example, uh, well, if you can actually burn steel, but right. um, but how how hot? Yeah. Can this? Uh, how insulated is this? Like Great how? How, how, yeah, more, yeah. how high of a temperature let's, can it withstand? Right. Let's talk about the secret sauce and talk <laughs> about it. Right. Let's talk about yeah. what actually makes it you know so novel and unique. Uh -huh. So the thermal protection system on Firebot allows Firebot to go into 650 degrees Celsius for mm -hmm. up to 15 minutes, and so essentially what you have is Firebot is designed to go to the some of the hottest temperatures ever that a robot's designed to go into. Okay. I like to call it the hottest robot that has ever been built. If you look at the nearest robot, it's a, a Russian probe that went to Venus. It went to about 450 C. And so that robot melted after a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. And so currently there's been very few, if not no robots that have been developed to go to these temperatures. A lot of other robots that are near these temperatures aren't really operating in an environment that high. Where do we get the 650 C from? That's the average temperature at which flashpoint occurs, where the mm. building simultaneously combusts. So we built our robot to go to these enormously high temperatures and last 15 minutes. A firefighter can't even touch a structure at those temperatures. Mm -hmm. Their suits are rated for only 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 200 degrees Celsius mm -hmm. for five minutes. That's their max rating. Mm -hmm. And so essentially what we have now is a robot that's designed to go into these extreme environments, still do searches, right? Yeah. And I'll be frank with you, there's very few, very little chance that a human is alive at 650C. It's almost zero, right? Mm -hmm. But our firebot was designed to go to these extremes. Maybe it needs to cross from one room that is not on fire through a room that is on fire to another room to see if there's a victim inside, yeah. right? And so it's built to go in those temperatures. The other side of things is the average temperature. Firebot can operate at 200 C for over an hour. And that's sort of the average temperature at the ground floor inside a structural fire. Mm -hmm. In a fire, heat rises, right? So the hottest temperatures are near the ceiling where it can go up to 1,000, 2,000 degrees, right? And so at the floor though, it's relatively cooler. Hence why one of the reasons why we built a ground robot and so Firebot's technology allows it to operate at these temperatures for an extended amount of time. Of course, it's moving very quickly and it doesn't need 60 minutes to search a structure unless it's very, very large. It's built to last that long. Okay. So it's it's a ground robot for now. You guys have plans to build something that can go multiple floors in the future? Yeah, so it's a ground robot, but it can climb stairs. And no so, way. Really? Yeah, so it has tracks and flipper arms that allows it to climb obstacles and stairs. So one firebot can can search one, two, three, four, five floor structures. Of course, it takes time to go upstairs. And mm -hmm. so for structures with many floors, they would deploy multiple firebots. But at its core, we built firebot to climb stairs. That mm -hmm. was one of the fundamental requirements that we built our product off of. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, you could just like take like some kind of arm and drop it off on, his, on, his, on, his, yeah. on the floor if you want even. Yeah. You don't have to like, <laughs> you know, to like, just to make it go up the stairs, I guess, faster. Right, you got it. Um, yeah, what we, what we in essence think is a lot of times firefighters uh, use up their ladders, they climb up uh -huh. the ladders on, on, on their aerial Exactly. Um, and so, yeah. You go up the ladder, yeah. bust the window, put the firebot in there. Exactly. Let it do its work. You got it. Yeah, I mean, multiple ways to get this done. That's that's incredible. Yep. Okay. And so, yeah, we've just built the technology to really be as versatile as possible, right? We don't know every single way these firefighters are going to use Firebot. We're trying our best. We've talked to hundreds of firefighters to help mm -hmm. better understand this, but we want to make sure it's so versatile and modular that they can use it whatever way they want. And mm -hmm. we'll get feedback on ways to make it better for them. And so that's part of the way that We've just been, that's been our part of our thesis for building this. I'm really impressed by this technology. I, I am. Like, first of all, it's an underserved market. It's an industry stock in the past. It's technology that is niche, but it's well thought out, right? Like you've thought about everything, <laughs> like within like the immediate use case. You can right. go upstairs, you can go up to higher temperatures than what's been recorded. You, you know, like it's crazy. This is this is really good. I appreciate it. Let me let me get you out of uh all of the technical stuff sure. about your technology and you know, let's 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 have a more fun discussion about <laughs> 
about other ways in which technology can be used. Sure. The, the firebot. Let's take your firebot and just the way it is and say, okay, I'm not thinking about this right now, but this is how else it could be used. So right. what other applications are out there that this could be used for? Yeah, that's a great question. It's something we've got a lot over the past couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. Firebot is a great you know, platform. It's a great product. How can we use it in other industries, other verticals? At its core, what Firebot is, is a rugged, resilient platform that can be used for a variety of industries. And let's look at a couple of them. The first obvious one is research. Firebot is a platform that can be used for research. It has a wide variety of sensors and capabilities on top of it. It mm -hmm. can gather data and give unparalleled awareness inside a variety of environments. And so what you have is a very modular research platform. We've even built what we call a plug and play system to allow people to plug in different sensors that they want and report the data back to the, to the control interface. That's a big application. The more exciting applications other than just research of which is huge is one is public utilities and mm -hmm. commercial and manufacturing entities. So let's dig into that a little bit. We've got a lot of interest from public utility companies, electric companies, water companies. These kinds of companies have very significant risks to their workers, to their associates that run these plants. Oftentimes they have to do inspections, certifications, and these processes can take them near dangerous environments or mm -hmm. hazardous environments. And so public utility companies also require you know, something that can do thorough searches, certifications, inspections, of which Firebot can be a very prime potential candidate. Commercial and manufacturing entities. We spoke with Valero about this. We've talked to a few other companies and corporations in Houston and around sort of the US where they identified a key issue where you can quickly see in oil and gas in commercial spaces, there's very similar you know, risks to workers, hazardous spills, toxic leaks, um, high temperatures even, mm -hmm. even for nuclear environments, right? Radiative environments. Firebot is built to essentially be a CBRNE resistant robot, chemical, biological, radial, uh, nuclear, and environmental proof, right? It can do a lot while being safe. Mm. And so it can be used in these commercial manufacturing zones to help do situational awareness, keep uh, their workers safe as well as if anything dangerous happens, it's a first responder, it's right there. Yeah. The last, and there's quite a few more, I'm not, I don't even have to get into yeah, it. Yeah, you could it, spend all day no talking worries. about yeah. it, yeah. If someone said, put this on a jet ski to do water rescues no. uh, for, for people that have you know drowned or are missing inside uh, lakes and things. The big a couple, couple ones we've looked at as well is, um, there's public safety. So with SWAT and police, you know, we have a bomb proof robot. Firebot can be used for bomb detection, bomb mm -hmm. disposal, IED removal, things like this. Um, we've gotten a few orders from different departments around the country. And essentially, Firebot can be used to help these police departments keep their police officers safe. While there are quite a few robots built in this space, none have really been. There's a, there's a few that are as bomb proof as Firebot is. Yeah. The last big thing that I like to touch on is disaster zones. We talked about 9 11 earlier today, talked about the Fukushima disaster, talked about some other collapses. Firebot can be used inside these situations. You know, if we look at the Fukushima disaster and 9-11, those are the first, some of the first examples where robots were used to search for victims. Unfortunately, it's very, very tough, right? The mechanics of getting a robot to circumvent debris and rubble is very difficult. Mm -hmm. However, that technology has gotten better over time. And we're getting to the point now where Firebot is not just innovating on the temperature side, but also innovating on the mechanical side. And so we're building a platform that can go into this rubble, into this debris, into these hazardous environments to look for victims just like other robots can. Mm. And so we even do testing on that. We work with Texas A&M's Teeks, um, their Brayton Fire Training Field. It's the Western Hemisphere's largest field for training firefighters. And they have what's called Disaster City. They have planes, trains, buildings, rubble piles. They essentially simulated part of 9-11 on this facility. They have entire structures that they crash and burn and destroy to test technology and train firefighters and emergency responders. So we test Firebot there. And so now you can immediately see where applications come in for Firebot to be used in a wide variety of industries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Just thinking about it, you could basically expand 
further and talk about a lot of other applications. But explain to me what CBRNE means again. Sure. It's chemical, biological, radio, uh, nuclear, environmental. It's sort of just a category of hazards uh-huh. um, in the US, right? If there's a CBRNE attack, you call 911, a firefighter comes, they deal with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's a bomb, the police might be involved, whether it's a chemical attack, um, then you're going to get some national <laughs> government agencies involved. Um, but essentially, CBRNE is just a class of threats and hazards to human health. 